Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to part two of my book diary for my read-along of Duck's Newburyport by Lucy Alman. I'm reading this as part of a read-along organised by Bex from Ninja Book Box. It's the 2nd of May today. I'm really far behind schedule. If I was sticking to the schedule, I should be halfway through the book by now. I'm about of an eighth of the way into it. Hopefully you've seen the first part of my book diary. I will link that down in the description box for you if you haven't seen that. Go watch that first to give a bit more context. It's meant to be a 10 week read long. I think it's probably going to take me longer than that to read this book because while I am enjoying it when I'm reading it, it is quite intense and so I have really have to be in the mood and unfortunately I haven't been in the mood for a couple of weeks. So I'm going to try and read some now because I am in the mood now. I'm going to try and get to a quarter the way through the book so I've got I think that would be about 150 pages so I'm gonna try and do that now <laughs> wish me luck I will check in again a bit later I'm really tired now I did not mean to be reading this book for this long tonight but it took longer than I was expecting but I made it to the next break which is page 243 so it means I'm now just about a quarter of the way through the book which is good and more of the plot is coming through now which is nice but yeah I'm just really tired I only meant to read for like an hour or so I think I did doze off a little bit because the writing is quite hypnotic the way it's written I think I've said that before in my last vlog about it so I think I did doze off a little bit in the middle and then I realised that well when I re realised that I was doing that I got up and started pacing as I was reading it because I wanted to hit my step count for the day as well so I was pacing while reading it for probably about an hour to try and stay awake and then now I mean it's it's gone half past ten now and it's this is not the sort of book that's easy to read in the evening I might try and read some more tomorrow because the next break is only about 60 pages away that was actually comparatively a really long section the other breaks don't seem to be quite so spread out so i think i will try and read some more tomorrow and try and make a bit more progress with it this weekend because it's the sort of book i think i'm only going to be reading on weekends but we'll see we'll see how it goes so i might check in again tomorrow hello again so it's been a little while again I think it's been about three weeks since I managed to read any of Ducks. Every weekend I think I'm going to try and read a bit this weekend and then I get caught up reading other things or doing other things but I just have a real urge to read it today. It's been a really long week and I had the day off work yesterday. Yesterday was Friday, today is Saturday. Oh you can see my half finished rhino in the background there. I'll try and remember to put a picture of him in when I finished him. So I spent this morning reading in bed which was really nice and really what I needed and I did quite a bit of reading yesterday and then I was meant to be going to see my nan but she my nan has dementia and she's 93 and she is really struggling with this whole lockdown thing not being able to leave the house and then she had some sad news last week that one of her friends has passed away one of her really good friends so she's really upset and really down at the moment and so I wanted to go and see her but my dad called and said he was with her and said that she was really upset and she actually she wasn't sure if she wanted to see me or not because she was so down that she didn't want me to see her upset so that's got me a bit down I'm not gonna lie so I went to the shop instead of going to see her and bought some ingredients because like I love baking and a lot of this book is about baking the main character has a kind of catering business so she makes pies and cakes and desserts for local restaurants and other events. She bakes cinnamon buns which I've never made before but I love cinnamon so I had a real urge to bake snickerdoodles which are one of my favourite biscuits so when I went to the shop I was meant to buy butter and I forgot to buy butter so I've got to go to another shop tomorrow and try and get butter and also see if they've got eggs and flour because I have some but I want to make sure I've got enough to keep baking so if I manage to do that tomorrow I'll include some pictures of my snickerdoodles when I made them so coming back to the point and I'm sorry this is really garbled but it's because my head is all over the place I wanted to do some reading this afternoon I planned to do some reading this afternoon anyway and I just thought because of what my concentration is like actually this book is so immersive that if I start reading it hopefully it'll help me focus. So I've got a mug of hot chocolate, I got in the shop these mermaid cake bars, I'm gonna eat that, I'm gonna drink my hot chocolate and I'm gonna try and read some ducks. At the moment I am on page 242. The next text break is page 308. 
eight, so I'm gonna try and get to page 308. At this point, I've lost track of where we're meant to be. If I get there, then I'll nearly be where I was meant to be at the 15th of April. Where should we be now? So I should be past page 700 at this point. I should be approaching page 800. I'm really far behind. I think everyone is though, and I think we've all agreed that it's gonna take us longer than the beginning of June to finish it, but hopefully I'll catch up a bit today and hopefully I'll read a bit more tomorrow and Monday when it's the bank holiday. Anywho, less talking, more reading. Catch you in a bit. So it's a little bit later, maybe an hour and a half. It took me to read about 50, 60 pages. It is slow progress with this book. It doesn't help that it is quite hypnotic, I think I've said before, and so at one point I did feel myself dozing slightly. So I got up and did a bit of walking while I was reading, which actually, with this book it's quite nice because the pace of the, the text is quite rhythmic, where it's quite repetitive, so I wouldn't usually walk and read at the same time, but with this book it kind of works. So I think I'm done with it for today, but I think I'm going to try and read the next section tomorrow, which will take me up to page 371. I can't remember if it, I've explained the structure of the book, but there's the sections in Stream of Consciousness, and then every so often there's a break and there's a short section about a lioness and her cubs. So I tend to pause at the end of the section of a lioness and then start again with the Stream of Consciousness the next time I'm reading. But anyway, the last little bit of the stream of consciousness that I read today. She's having a conversation with her children and one, and one of her children says that bird flu only has to mutate a few more times to cause a global pandemic like Spanish flu and that if that happens, civilization will grow to a halt within a year. Yeah, so well done, Lucy Elman, the author, for predicting this pandemic. I mean, I'm not sure if coronavirus is a similar to the bird flu thing or if it's I know they're all quite similar I don't know if it's the same strain anyway I just thought that was really funny anyway so this was a good distraction for an hour hour and a half and now it's nearly supper time so I'm gonna go raid the cupboard and find something to eat for my dinner and I'm probably gonna read some other stuff this evening and I might actually do some editing of the first part of this vlog which I haven't actually edited yet to try and get that uploaded for you and then hopefully I'll read some more tomorrow and bake my snickerdoodles and I'll let you know how I get on. Bye for now. So I'm in my kitchen where I've had a bit of a snickerdoodle production line going. Only one of my ovens works so the bottom oven doesn't work at all which means I've only got one shelf to bake them on and I forgot how much you get out of this recipe that I've used which is actually from my mum's cookbook so I've had to get a picture of it and I've been making it from a picture but it's such a great recipe so I've made about I think it's 44 four cookies. So you can see I've got some boxed up, they're going to go in the freezer. I've just got some that are cooling there and they're going to go in that box and then I might freeze them as well. And then there's a tray there waiting to go in, in a minute. And then there's a tray in the oven at the moment which actually might be ready to take out. Shall we have a look? Let's see. Shaky camera work. Oh, they look good. I think they're done. Ta-da! Snickerdoodles are my favourite cookie, I think. Next one's in there. Ready to go. And have the last batch, so yeah. Managed to read some two days in a row, yay. And I made snickerdoodles today. So I've done a bit of baking. I'm now, I made it to page 371. So I am past a third of the way through. I'm about where I should have been a month ago if I was sticking to the schedule. It's just really slow to read it. Like I'm quite a fast reader, but I think because I have to concentrate so much on it, I only read about, so I read from page 308 to 371. So that's like 60 pages and it's taken me about two hours. Maybe not quite, maybe like an hour and a half. That's really slow compared to how fast I usually read other stuff. And it just requires so much concentration. Like this section today had some bits that were just like long lists of place names. <laughs> the top of this page is just all place names. Some interesting stuff in there about like the experiences of Native Americans when 
the settlers were settling and killing people. So that was quite interesting. I don't know a lot of American history. There's quite a lot in there that references to the, what's the name, Laura Ingalls Wilder books, Little House on the Prairie and all of that series, which I've never read. So I wonder if I should have read those first, really. But, I mean, it's not affecting my enjoyment of it. It's just, it, it's not an easy book to read. I'm not going to lie. It's not easy to read. I might try and read some more tomorrow. The next section is quite short. It's only about 30, 40 pages. So I might plough on and read a bit more tomorrow because it's bank holiday. But then the next section after that is a really big chunk, like 90 pages. Yeah, we're going to stop there for now. I'm going to stop rambling. I went for a walk by the river today and saw some ducks, though I might put a little bit of footage of the ducks I saw. Because when I see ducks, it makes me think of this book at the moment. It's been a couple of weeks again, we're now on the 7th of June, Sunday 7th of June. With all the stuff that's been going on in the world, yeah, I just haven't had the energy to focus on Ducks Newberry Pot until today, but I've just read another section, so that was about 40 pages. What I found really interesting, so I'm now up to page 407, and in the last little bit I read, there are several references to police brutality and black people being victimised by the police. And I just thought that is really ironic seeing this This was written, what, two, three years ago? I don't actually know, but it was published like last year or the year before, wasn't it? Just the irony that I'm reading it now with the Black Lives Matter movement really gaining some traction now. And hopefully by the time this vlog actually goes up, we'll still be being talked about. It it shouldn't just be a trend that will go away. Literally just seen on the news, Bristol, which is the city that my dad is from originally, had a protest today and they've pulled down a statue of someone who was really sort of quite fundamental in building up the city and the city's wealth, but all of his money came from slavery. His name was Ed Edward Colston and today they pulled down the statue of him and thrown it in the in the harbour. I think I feel like it was overdue, really. Apparently there have been petitions to take the statue down for a long time and like some of the confederate leaders in the United States that have statues that are finally starting to be taken down. There are ways and there are ways of acknowledging and remembering problematic history in our countries and I don't think that we've got it the right way at the moment. Like statues are a celebration of someone. We don't want to be celebrating that anymore. We shouldn't have been celebrating that really anyway but we do need to acknowledge and remember and talk about our problematic past. Like, I think a lot of the problems we have with racism in society today stem from British colonialism, but we're not taught about that in schools. I remember doing maybe one week on the slave trade in high school, in secondary school. We, don't, we certainly didn't talk about it very much or for very long. <laughs> Actually, I do remember, because it was something I was shocked and appalled by at the age of like 14, 15, and I talked to my history teacher about it, and he's like, and he recommended a film to me. I must have been 14, actually, because he recommended a film to me called Amistad. Maybe I was 15, and it was a 15, and they had it in the school library, and they wouldn't let me take it out because I was in year 9 and not in year 10. I have actually got it on DVD now, and I've watched it, and it is a very powerful, very moving film. Anyway, yeah, so I thought it was just really interesting that there were references to police brutality in the bit of the book that I've just read. And if I'd read that bit a couple of weeks ago, when I last picked this book up, it wouldn't have impact me as much as it just has. The next section is about another 30 pages so I'm going to read a little bit more now and then tonight it's Sunday evening I've had a really busy week, stressful in some ways, so I'm going to go and run a bath and hopefully by the time I finish reading the section the bath will run. One other thing I want to say about this book is because the narrator is a caterer, she makes pies and cakes and things in her kitchen. Everything she's writing about I want to bake. This section she was talking about lemon drizzle cake, so I have a real urge to bake a lemon drizzle cake now, which I might do next week. I did make some random cookies today. I'm going to show you if it will hold together. We go. So these are um, the no bake peanut butter oat cookies. I add some cocoa powder to give them a slight chocolatey flavour. Put a load of nuts in as well, a little bit of honey to help bind it. So they're going to be like my breakfast cookies because I thought I enjoy eating cereal bars in the morning but they often have a lot of additives and a lot of sugar in them. So they, these I know exactly what's gone into them and they actually taste pretty good. So yeah they're going to be my breakfast cookies for the next week but I'm just having one for dessert now.
and I've just had my dinner. So I'm going to eat my cookie, I'm going to read some more of the book and I'm going to run myself a bath and I might update again tonight or I might just leave it for today. So I finished the next section, I'm now at page 440 and I realised something that I should have said earlier was that if I'd stuck to the original schedule I should have actually finished the book by now. We were due to finish it by the 3rd of June, that was the plan originally. I clearly have not managed that and will not manage that, I'm not even halfway through yet. So my aim now is to try and finish this book by the end of July. We're a week into June now, so that's just over, just under two months to try and get to the end. And I'm nearly halfway through and I've been reading it since the end of March. So, I mean, I've been reading it about two months already. So that's probably doable if I do attack it, try and read some every weekend. There's a little thing now where it seems like the next lot of sections are slightly shorter, but I'll just have to see how it goes really. I'm gonna leave it there for today and hopefully try and read some more later in the week and try and get a bit further with it. I'm enjoying it, but when I'm deciding what book to pick up, it's, it's not really my priority ever. So I'm glad I've read some more today and I will be trying to <laughs> get through it at a slightly faster pace hopefully from now on, but we'll just have to see how it goes. I don't want it to be hanging over me for, for like a really long time. So if I can try and make some good progress on it this month and yeah, finish by the end of July, that would be great. Hi, we're now on the 14th of June. I've just read about another maybe 30, 40 pages. So I'm nearly halfway through. I'm on page 472, which is not quite halfway, but nearly halfway. <laughs> I can't believe how long this book is taking. It's just, it's really hard work. It's really hard work. But I am enjoying it when I do read it. I just have to be in the right frame of mind. What I am enjoying is that she does talk a lot about films and I really feel like I should have been keeping a list of all the films that she mentions to watch them. Some of them I have seen and some of them I haven't. So in the last little bit I've read she talked a little bit about some film musicals and some of them I've seen and it's quite fun. So earlier in the book there seemed to be a little bit of a plot developing but, but then that kind of tailed off and there doesn't seem to be very much plot again at the moment. So I don't know if in the second half of the book there's going to be more of a plot again. We'll have to see. So what I think I'm going to do is wrap up this part of the vlog here and then hopefully there'll be one more vlog where I'll read all the rest of it in the next sort of six weeks or so but we'll have to see I do want to try and finish it by the end of July but it does mean I'm gonna to have to pick up the pace a bit if I want to do that I mean there's some shorter and some longer sections so because I try and sit down and read a section at a time if the sections start to get a bit longer I might be able to pick up the pace a bit more Again, I'll just have to see how it goes a bit. <laughs> I'm going to finish it well past, like, I should have finished it already if I was sticking to the schedule, but I'm, so I'm going to be well past the deadline, really, to finish it, but never mind. Yeah, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed this second volume of this book diary reading vlog thing. I hope you'll stick around for the third part. Yeah, maybe there'll just be one more part or maybe there'll be two more parts, depending on how much longer this book is going to take me. But I feel like I'm in a bit more of a rhythm with it now. And if I can read at least a little bit every week, by the end of July, that's about six weeks. So I need to try and read a little bit more than just one section a week. I'm about 500 pages to go. If I read just under 100 pages a week, I should finish it in that time but we'll see. Anywho, I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next reading vlog coming soonish. Look out for other stuff on my channel. If you want to be notified, then click the little bell icon below and subscribe to see more videos from me. And also check out my social media if you would like to. But that's it from me. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.